right? I think Dollar Cat and, and Pound Dollar are technically great, um, great examples on this, right? Uh, so let me just um, open up my. Yeah, I'll be I'll be taking this trade here on my FTMO challenges account. Okay. Uh, so of course I'm using the swing trade account, right? So that allows me to trade the news. Um, if I'm not mistaken, if you take out the, I mean, they have two options. If you take the other one, um, you are not able to hold trade overnight and you're definitely not able to trade news, right? But my account type, um, my challenge with them is the swing account. Okay, so that one I'm able to actually trade the news, okay? Um, so looking at things here, probably I'm going to go with the pound dollar. Okay, uh, pound dollar looks nicer in terms of the range. Okay, yeah. So let me just do a very simple markup. Okay, uh, and of course to just show you guys, right? Um, Okay, so how to calculate proper position for those of you not familiar. Okay, uh, so I'm not going to risk 1% on this. I'm just going to take a 0 0.5. Um, again, I'm taking less than 1% to account for potential slippages and things like that may result in a slightly bigger loss. Um, so I'm just going to take a, you know, a 0 0.5. I'm going to put a 20 pip stop loss. Okay, um, if you're more aggressive, I can even consider 15 pips, right? And then we're looking at the dollar related. Um, so trading about 3.33 lot, okay, um, with a 15 stop, right? So if I look at this here, um, you know, I'll add in a little bit of a, you know, account for potential spread and such. Um, so while the price high range here is about 2625, uh, I'll probably add maybe about two pips, okay? Again, accounting for potential slippages and things like that. Uh, and then over here, the stop, okay, let's say we do a 15 pip, right, and we aim for a 15 pip, okay, so that's the setting, uh, and then over here, in terms of the short side of things, is at 2603, um, so I'm going to, like, discount another 2 pips for that, so it's going to be 2601, okay, 15 pips, 15 pips. Right now, as I mentioned, right, the target here, I may not want to put in a hard target, uh, but definitely what I want to put a stop, right? The target here, I'll probably leave it as we tag into it. We have a mental idea that okay, I'm gonna catch 15 to 20 pips. So if I can make about 20 to 15 to 20 pips, I'll probably just close it at that period of time, okay? So let me bring out the okay, pound dollar over here. Okay, so just now I mentioned 3.33, right? So how you do this is very straightforward, right? You just basically put in a buy stop, 1.2627, that's our entry. Stop loss here is 1.2612, um, okay? So as I mentioned, I'm not gonna put the target, right? Depending on how it's gonna go, we're just gonna aim for 1520 and then close it manually, okay? And um, another direction here is gonna be a sell stop. Okay, so that will be at 2601, and the stop is going to be at 2616. Okay, I would strongly encourage you to put a stop, right? Um, the thing here is, you never know, right? Sometimes things can happen really fast where the market, you know, might tag us, and then maybe sometimes they just whip sore, okay? Um, so you want to definitely have their stop in place um, in the event something like that happened, and then you are not able to manually, you know, adjust or close that fast enough the stop loss is always there to protect you. Okay, um, so we'll see um, how things go for this. Okay, I mean dollar cat is definitely still doable if you want to focus on that instead. Um, it's just that this range is a little bit tight, so you just need to factor in potential um, slippages, right? You may want to add in a little bit more. Good. Um, so definitely, we still have you know sufficient time to set things out. Um, Ideally, you do not want, like me, right, to put in the pending order now, right? Because if this just keeps going up, then I'll probably not want to focus on the buy side because then, as I mentioned, price is getting closer to the upper bound. It may not be ideal, okay? 
So you can see, um, once you're familiar with these processes, right, news creating should be pretty straightforward and you can really set it up um, pretty short, right? I mean, pretty fast. Okay, you don't need a long time to actually set things up. Uh, so ideally, you know, right now we are like seven minutes into the news, right? Going into the news. Uh, you do not want to put your order too far off the news, right? Oftentimes, like within the first, within five minutes, then we start to do things, okay? And then, um, you know, we're left with like maybe one minute, one and a half minutes, and then we we'll wait for the news, right? Uh, but for this purposes, right, um, again, because I need some time to really explain, especially for some of you who need a recap or some of you are first time joining, okay? Um, so just want to highlight on the technique and the idea of it so we spend a little bit more time to talk about it. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. So like, you know, things like this is going closer to the top of a range, which is not really technically the ideal aspect of the breakout. Okay. Uh, let me very, very quickly also take a look at potentially the dollar Canadian, right? Okay. So if I'm going to look at dollar Canadian here, um, We'll probably look at this at three six three nine, okay. And then of course, if I just put in fifteen pips, um, that's how it looks like, okay. Um, and then if I'm gonna look at dollar Canadian sell, we'll probably add in a little bit of a it's two four, right? So we're gonna probably do two two here, okay. So we want to add in a little bit of spread um to account for potential slippages okay um yeah so now this is coming back down right so it's basically i i would say pound dollar is definitely still the most ideal one as of now okay because the range is um, sufficiently wide enough right 20 plus okay good um yeah so we have about five minutes um so during news trading that's basically what we want um to set up and then we'll we'll just wait for the news okay uh cool Okay, so let's see. Um, ideally, we want a surprise element, which means the actual data versus the forecast. We want it to be the difference to be big, right? We call that a deviation, right? The bigger the deviation, the bigger the surprise element, the nicer the move is going to be, right? Because we want a nice, clean move in one direction. Um, we don't want a whip sort. We don't want, you know, um, an uncertain aspect, right? So if data comes out, you know, some of it are the same, some of it a little bit of the upside, some of it downside, then we get a mixed data. That's a little bit tricky. Okay, but again, we will never know until we see the price movement, right? Uh, and if you're waiting for the data to come out, then only you make a decision. Sometimes it's too late. Okay, so we are not um, able to execute fast enough when the market data is out, right? So that's why we use a breakout order. Okay, a bias from itself. So. Cool. Um, so that's what I have so far. We'll just give it a couple of minutes. Um, you know, I'll let you guys have some time to also consolidate your top process. Uh, if let's say you have any questions um, regarding this, you know, you can consolidate your top process. I'll answer those questions after the news. Okay, after this trade is done, we'll see how it goes. Um, then if you have any question on news trading, I'll take those answers. I'll take those questions and give you those answers. Um, and then, of course, do a very quick kind of review, whatever happens after, okay? Cool. Um, yeah, so that's for now. We'll just wait for... Just open this up here, right? Okay, let's just wait for around two minutes and see how things go. Okay, so again, this is not like ideal, right? Because it's getting very close to the top. It doesn't really give us an equal weightage between the upside and the downside. Um, whereas like dollar Canadian definitely look better right now. Okay, we just want to highlight on that perspective. Good. Um, yeah, so a couple of seconds. We'll see whether we get a nice clean break. Um, good. So to the upside. Oh. Okay, so we get a clean break. Um, as I mentioned, you know, that is slippages on my side. Um, so that's why, again, it's good not to have your kind of target there, right? I can't manually close that. 
Um, again, there was a bit of a volatility spike. Um, I did not really get out with like the best price possible. <laughs> um, yeah, but it was a simple $350 trade, uh, minus a little bit of a commission here for $10, so it's about 300 plus, right? Not the best, right? You can see how I, I got slipped, right? 2640 was my entry price. Um, initially, we were looking at 2627. Okay? So, based on my experience, I mean, that's FTMO, right? Um, last news trade, I got slipped at FTMO. <laughs> um, different brokers manage slippages slightly differently. Um, so, FTMO, I got slipped. Um, you can see, right? Our initial intended entry, 2627. Um, the entry actual was at 2640. It was crazy, right? Very, very close to the target. So I saw it move a little bit. Um, not much. Okay. Um, I get out at two six five 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 one five zero. Right. So it's about ten pips. Did not really catch that fifty. Of course, it starts to move higher than now, but we never know when it's happening. And what I saw is like, wow, the slip was huge. Okay, my intended target was four two. Um, it went to fifty. I say, okay, whatever it is, I'll just catch it, right? Because you never know is. It can come back down, okay. Right? Um, but of course, if you did not get slipped too badly, you probably would have catch a little bit more, right? Or you may even catch the full twenty pips target, right? Uh, so again, news trade is really that straightforward. Um, whatever it does now, shouldn't be of a concern, right? Um, if you want to have some kind of like a more advanced management, right? Just now you mentioned about fifteen twenty, you might even not have a. You might not even want to close the entire thing at 15 and 20 and just shift your stops to break even. Okay. Um, you can do that, but again, you probably need to, you know, monitor the market. And again, um, you know, oftentimes we see after a nice little reaction, the market may ding dong a little bit and things like that. So for me, it's just not worth doing that, right? And that's the part where I just decide, all right, 15, 20, I set a target, I get out. Done. Look at the next one, okay? Um, so pretty straightforward, right? Um, for those of you who traded, um, it was a clean trade, right? As I mentioned, it's a clean break. It's just a matter of how your broker manage your execution, right? How far you get slipped, okay? Um, same thing here, a very nice little break, okay? So yeah, okay, so that's, that's the trade itself. Um, straightforward, okay?